This is a tiki mug by Crazy Al Evans, and it was for, made for Smuggler's Cove, and they've sold a ton of them. And as I understand the story, the factory in China lost the master. They need to make more molds, so we need to make a copy of this master that Al owns. Let's get on with it. We need to build a base for the top of the sculpture. Right in here, a plug. And we need to build a base for the mold. So let's mark out a few things here. So let's kind of take an average all the way around. I'm just making sure that this thing clears. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to trace out something about that size. We'll just use this piece of scrap flooring lumber. Something like that. And then we'll do the exact same thing on the top here. We'll go ahead and measure out this top. And this is going to want to be about about a two and three quarter, two and three quarter inch circle on the top. So let's go get those marked out and we'll get them cut out over at the bandsaw. I cut out all my wood pieces. And then the other thing I did, I just took a jug like this, just a resin jug, I took two of them actually, and then I used the plastic. And as you can see, there's a seam in the middle and I welded the two jugs together because I didn't have a big enough piece of plastic. Just used the handy dandy <laughs> Fordham wax carver and welded it together. Worked shockingly, shockingly well. So now this is gonna be the bottom piece. We're gonna lob it on there like this. This on there like this. There you go. And if I do this right, this piece of wood here on the bottom, with a little help from some shims, will hold all that together. Now, I should be able to go around with my welder and weld up this seam. And all I'm doing is spot welding, really. It's amazing that those welds, those little spot welds that I'm doing here, they hold together that well. Not bad. Just go through and do some spot welding. All right, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna weld the whole thing together. And that is how we're gonna build this case. Pretty fancy. Let's get these parts waxed up with my favorite substance ever, beeswax. Love beeswax because it's great for sealing porous materials like wood and paper. And the rubber loves it because it won't stick to it. And the resin loves it because it won't stick to it. This looks like the lid of this cup, but in fact, it's going to be the base. Set it in place and get it reasonably level. That looks pretty good to me. Break out the wax tools and let's wax it into place. Freeman Manufacturing and Supply sent us over a fun new thing. This is sticky wax, uh, but it's in rod form. So I can come along and just drip the wax right into place. Yeah, this is waxed in there good and tight, and I don't want to fill it all up with wax. It'll take too long. And by the way, this all this gets cut out in the final thing. So this, what I'm doing here, doesn't matter. As you can see, I'm making a recast of a previous casting, so none of this matters in the final product. So don't get weirded out as to why this is such a mess. That's why. All we have to do is make sure that when we pour the rubber, the rubber can't go and flow inside of the body of this piece. That would not be good. <laughs> It'd be a big waste of rubber, let me tell you. So we want to make sure that it's nicely plugged up, and that's really all we're doing here. Plugging a hole and making a base that we can use to attach this sculpture to the case, to the mold case. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to not leak. When we pour this piece, it's going to pour upside down like that. And that means that all of the surfaces that are facing in this direction, as the rubber rises up, those are the areas that could trap bubbles very easily. So when we turn them over, we know exactly where we're going to use our favorite pre-paint technique, which is I took some rubber, pre-mixed it, and debubbleized it, and now we are gonna paint this technique of pre-painting 
your sur the surfaces of complex molds, anything that has a lot of detail. This technique is most useful for making sure that you don't catch bubbles. It really, really can help push the rubber into areas where you would trap bubbles when you fill the mold case. You want to go through and you want to paint, pre-paint all these little details. This is where craftsmanship comes in. This is where taking your time comes in. You just have to go through and paint the surface out. So you get it. I'm going to go through. I'm going to pre-paint the whole thing everywhere I feel like I could catch a bubble. And when we're all done with that, we'll go forward and pour the body of the mold. Okay, let's get this Tiki Boy mounted onto the base here so we can get a mold box put around him. And I'm just gonna use my handy dandy beautiful sticky wax, run a bead of sticky wax around the base. That's it, it's not gonna take a lot. This rod sticky wax is more fluid. A little, bit, a little bit more liquidy than the wax I'm used to. I love the way it flows in like that. That is nice. This is great stuff. All right, good. That's good enough. That's all we need. Time to build a case. Let's do it. I took this, my beautiful welded together gallon jug case, and I sealed it up on the inside with the same rubber I'm gonna pour with, and I did that yesterday when I did all the pre-painting, and that means we're not gonna have any leaks. Best tip in the world, if you think your case building skills are a little light, if you use the same rubber to seal the case up, seal up all the edges and all the seams ahead of time, before you pour the main mold, you won't have any leaks, and you won't have like weird materials and stuff to clean up. It all just becomes one mold. It's easily the greatest thing ever. It took me a few years to learn that little trick. Okay. So let's get this thing going. This is gonna be the ring that's gonna secure the main part of the case. And it's gonna go in there. We're gonna line up these arrows to tell me how they fit together. Without those two arrows, forget about it. I'd never be able to figure it out. In theory, it will fit on there. I'm gonna get this case to fit and then I'll come back to you. Okay, this mold case is ready to go. And if you'll notice in this top plate, there's a split right here. And that split is just so I could get my bandsaw in there and cut that out, but it also has another function. This plate down here has the exact same split in it. Here it's all covered up with oil clay, but this clamp is locking this together. It's pulling it together. And this ring, this wooden ring, is locked tight around this plastic case. I mean, it is bar tight. That is rock hard. That is going nowhere. There was a slight seam around it, and I thought with given silicone rubber's propensity for finding its way out of the world's most tiny cracks, I would clay it up to make sure it won't leak. And also, the other thing I did is you'll notice in each corner, these drywall screws are holding this base tight to this, so there won't be any leaks coming out of here. I mixed up a batch of rubber. Let's pour it. As usual, trying very hard to drop that rubber all the way to the bottom of the mold. I do not want to drape this piece. I want to rise it from the bottom. So that was 350 grams, and that's only up to here. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven times. So this is looking like it's gonna be almost five pounds of rubber in this mold. That's pretty chunky. All right, well, we know what we're in for. Let's do it. After I poured the first batch, I realized that I don't think I've ever made a mold case more crying out for a funnel than this one. I have a very, very narrow slot around the rim to pour down and it's got to drop a long way over probably 12, 13 inches all the way to the bottom. It's just gonna pour a lot faster using this funnel. So I just built it very quick, very fast out of oil clay. This is what oil clay is genius at, stuff like this. And you'll see it's going to help to make the rest of the pours go quick and easy. We're going to pour a big bucket of rubber. Let's get going. This is where this funnel hopefully will earn its keep because it's going to allow me to just dump material and it'll just fall in a sheet just like that. And that is working perfectly. See, I'm pouring much faster with that funnel than I could pour without it. And yet the clay is under very little pressure. It's warm in the shop. 
so I don't want to take forever to pour this rubber. People ask me why I don't have spatulas and other fancy tools and I always just use sticks. And the answer is I'm based on kind of a wood shop, so I always have sticks laying around of all different sizes and shapes. And they work. And they're simple. They're available and they're free because they're leftovers. Here we go. Let's see if we can't pour the rest of this. All right, topper batch. This you just dump. And hopefully I mixed up just the right amount to fill this. Looks like it's gonna come pretty close. Okay, another thing we can do here is we could, if we wanted to, go so far as to pull off our funnel. Our funnel did its job. Say goodbye to the funnel. <laughs> goodbye, funnel. All right, it looks pretty good. <laughs> pretty level, I'd say. Uh, we got them all. Tomorrow, we're gonna put a shell around it and then we're gonna cut it open. We are ready to pull this mold apart, uh, but before we do, here's a question for you. What do you do with things like this? It's almost always labor over materials. So this is gonna go straight into the trash. Okay, let's take this mold apart. Take the clamp off first. Did its job. Get these screws out. Pull the tape off. This case did a good job of making this mold, but the downside to this style of case, which was just basically, as you saw, I've recycled out of old gallon jugs, uh, is that it's going to make a perfectly lousy cradle for casting. It's not going to work. So what we're going to have to do is make a cradle. All right, here we go. That should just pop right out, and it did. See, boy, this mold, like, this is the genius of wax. This is the genius of this kind of thing. Look at how easy and quick and painless taking apart this mold case was. And by the way, I am shocked. I just used my waxer to weld this together, and it held up plenty strong. It comes right apart, but it held up plenty strong for making this mold case. That was a win. Now, question. Can we get this off easily? I might have to pry that base off of there. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt the original. So I want to be careful pulling this base off of there. I just wanted to say before we go on, in order to pop this base off the sculpture, all I had to do was run a knife around it and it just popped right off. Easy peasy, didn't get it on camera, but came off easy. All right, let's move on. We got to make a case. And to make a case, we're going to need parting lines. So I took two sticks and I beeswaxed them up. And now we can add the registration pins. And the whole point to these pins is that we want the front half of the mold to interlock with the back half of the mold so they don't move around. And when we, when we cast the pieces, uh, everything stays tightly in place. So these pins will create divots in one side of the mold, and then we'll cast little half rounds in the other side of the mold, and the two molds will lock together, and everything will work perfectly. I took those two sticks, and I mounted them on the sides of the mold, and I just, I'm just using a, a, a caliper, a built, an old spring caliper, as, as a perfect custom clamp. And as you can see, I'm using my entire bench as a hold down. This long stick is just pushing against this vertical, this parting line, same on the other side. The reason that the sticks are at an angle is because I want to hold the vertical sticks tight to the mold on, the, on this front edge. We are ready to break out the trowel on and make a mold case. All right, let's mix up some resin. I already got the A side in, and we just have to add in the B. The resin I'm using is called Trowel On 60, and it's from our friends at Silpak. And it's not a pouring resin, it's a trowel on resin, exactly what it's named. You spackle it on like cake frosting. I've used it before on the channel. It's one of my favorite ways to make a shell. And it's quick and easy, much faster than fiberglass. And it's just generally a more pleasant material to work with. All right, so let's goober some of this stuff on and see how we do. You can work from the top down as I'm doing here, or you can work from the bottom up. Either way is fine. It sticks pretty well. 
You can build this stuff up in coats too. And, and the other thing you can do is mix it with pouring resins so you can control the consistency. You can have it be like peanut butter or cake frosting like this, or you can have it to be much thinner and much more easily brushed on. I generally use it straight. I don't bother to thin it or mix it, uh, but it's an option. Cleanup is with acetone and that works well so you can keep reusing the same brush. You don't have to burn through a lot of brushes while using this stuff. I got the mold shell all made. It's all buttered up nicely. <laughs> Looks like spam frosting. Now I wanna take these sticks off, but I don't wanna take the shell off. I wanna leave the shell in position. So we'll see if I can just get something in between the wood and the resin. Oh yeah, oh, how much do we love beeswax? How much do we love beeswax? Get this stick off, this one. There we go. That popped right off. Okay, so the question is, how hard is it gonna be to pop these little buttons out of there? I think what's needed here is just a fine screwdriver. Fine little screwdriver. Well, it should do it, yep. I'd like to save them if I can. They're stuck on there more than I'd like them to be. I thought they'd pop off really easy with that ease release. They're not popping easy, but I'll get them. I thought they're stuck on there pretty good. There we go. All right, I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna pull all of these out of here. Time to put some wax on these parting lines. I got it all liquidy, let's do it. Now, I don't need to put wax on the rubber, obviously. I just need to put it on the plastic because I want there to be no chance whatsoever that the second coat, the second side to this shell could possibly remotely stick. And what will guarantee that it won't stick? Our old friend beeswax. Beautiful beeswax. In this half of the mold, there's these, all these rough bubbles. Now they don't matter at all to the integrity of the shell, but I don't want to cast them into the second side because they could lock. So I'm just going to go through really quick and very rough like that and fill in all these little bubbles with oil clay. Another genius use for oil clay. Got the parting lines made. Everything is beautiful. Need to come around with the parting agent. Make sure we get it. Mixed up a 400 batch of our Crowlon. It's weird because it turns a really kind of a sickly, nasty looking gray color at first, but it cures to kind of the more of a spam color. It makes a weird color change. I'm beating it well, just getting it, scraping the sides. Everything is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna kinda, kinda dump it on there first. Figure it'll be easy to move around once it's on top. Let's trowel it. So let it live up to its name. All right, that side went really well. I'll do the same thing on this side just, and just trowel this stuff on, even it out. It's warm in the shop and it's going off, but it's still giving me time. I like to push trowel on out to the edge of the forms. So I kind of have a built up bead on the edge. Quick and easy, one coat, one shot, few minutes of work. The trowel on resin is all dry. So we've got a nice hard shell and uh, it's ready to pop off. So now the question is, is this thing gonna fight us all the way or is it gonna pop off? We shall see what we shall see. It looks like, let me see if I can get you guys to see what I'm doing here. It looks like it's gonna wanna come out pretty good. Oh yeah, let's see, there's enough flex in it. Yep, should, thanks to all that beeswax, come right apart. 
Oh, that's that seam. Let's try this seam. A little, little wedge in there. Wedge it open. Yep. Wedge it open. Here we go. Here we go. Oh yeah. There we go. Very nice. Before we move things around too much, there we go. I'm gonna do something here. I'm just gonna make a little notch in the top of the case. Just a little notch. I don't know if you can see that. I made a little notch. And I'm gonna make a corresponding notch in the rubber. Just like that. Right, can you guys see that? See that notch? And the reason for that is these are pretty similar parts and uh, it would be easy to forget how it went back together and I want it to go back together perfectly. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. That's going to work out absolutely perfect. Very pleased with that. That came out just fine. It is time to cut this mold open, and we're gonna do it. So far, it's cutting perfect. I'm cutting right down in the middle of a seam in the shape, which is exactly what I want to do. As I get it open, you'll be able to see more. Yeah, see, if I do it like this, I can't see if I'm on the line. I wanna be on the line. I'm off the line right at the moment, so I don't wanna do that too much. I really wanna be on the line. We're very close to the point where we can free the model. Let's see. Looks like I might have to do a little cutting around the rim. You know, I could cut the rim. What if I cut the rim? Maybe that would be a better strategy like that. Just cut the, around that rim just enough to free the parts. I don't want to cut across the bottom because of the lettering on the bottom. And I don't want the bottom to leak too much. Let's see if that's going to be enough. That should do it. Yeah, that's going to do it. It's going to give us enough flex. There we go. Come on. There he goes. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. Let's take a look at how we did. Oh, man. I do not see a single bubble. Let's see about the lettering before I get all braggy. Lettering's perfect. Well, whoop, one micro tiny bubble right there. But see, I don't know because there's some bubbles in the original lettering too. So I'm not gonna cre take credit for that bubble just yet, but boy, I tell you what, look at that. Look at that. That's pretty nice. That is clean. I am really pleased that this mold came out as well as it did, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button because it really does help the channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you next week.